what is up you guys uh this is uh day one of my seven part series uh each day i'm gonna focus on a different section of writing a song and uh hopefully by the uh, end of the seven days we'll have a, a completed track and uh i will give you guys that session and uh i'll be giving you guys a session every day at the end of the tutorial it'll be a uh, link to my facebook and you just go download section and you can download it and follow along if you want uh, today I'm not doing a live stream. Uh, tomorrow I pro around six o'clock I probably will be on. Uh, I'll make a YouTube hangout so you guys could come watch it live. And then uh, after that's done, for those of you guys that didn't get to catch it, I'll be. Uh, I'll probably have that video up too. It'll be linked. Or I, I'm sorry. Uh, the the live stream will then be just a regular upload. So. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to make yet. I actually haven't even thought about it. So I'm just going to start making a track from scratch. I've already done a few things to save some time. So all I've done so far is I just uh, brought in a spectrum and I set a marker and I put and I wrote A minor on there. So my whole song, I already know what key it's going to be in and I can tune my kicks and uh, all my other th uh, percussions to that. And so when I start writing in melodies and chords, that will... Um, all work together harmonically so uh, I'm not gonna I'm gonna try to talk about things I think are important but other than that you're just gonna see me working cuz uh, it's really hard to uh, you know do stuff and like you know create music and talk about what you're doing at the same time I'm just not like a, a natural teacher like that um, so I will explain things I will be talking the whole time but uh, you know, there'll be parts where I'm just trying to figure out things. So, uh, just, you're pretty much going to be watching me work. So I'm going to get started to save some time. I'm trying to think if there's anything I should have mentioned, but, uh, whatever, I'm just going to get started. So I'm just going to look for a top layer, uh, to my kicks. Cause that's usually where I start off. My BPM is good. I like the key that I'm going to do this in. So I'm just ready to work. So let me see. I'm going to find a nice analog kick. And this is from the Dead Mouse X for sample pack. Uh, it costs like 60 bucks and you get a lot of stuff. I'll kind of show this off right now. So, uh, this is a good buy right here. So you get like analog kicks, big kicks, all this shit. It's great. And uh, let me see. I like this kick uh, as an effect. So I'm going to throw this in here. I'm just going to mute it for now. I have a an idea of what I can use it for. So already I'm gaining some ideas of what I'm going to do. So I have like no inspiration or no idea of what I'm going to do. Just going to build I'm just going to build a drum section. Oh, that's an interesting kick. It's very unique, kind of different. So I'm just going to Zoom in here. I'm going to just create a four to the floor pattern. So it's pretty much a kick on every beat of every bar, uh, quarter bar, quarter notes, I mean. Uh, I don't know why this, oh, I probably brought this falling down. Okay, so uh, let me see. Uh, there's a compressor on this, uh, so let me make sure I got all this stuff off. So there's nothing else going on here. Just uh, this is a pretty much a new track. I just wanted to do a few things before. It's an interesting kick. So uh, I'm gonna now tune it. So using uh, Ableton Spectrum, which is under Audio Effects, right here. I just have this sitting on my master from the beginning of uh, when I start writing a song and I'm just going to bring it up into this view and I'm going to listen to this kick by itself. And it uh, looks like the highest peak was at around an F or an E. So uh, what that means to me is that's what the root note of this uh, sample is. So I need to now tune it to an A. So I'm just going to select all these kicks. I'm going to press Command J and just uh, consolidate it. 
so it's just one audio file and uh, so it was an F so let me think if I want it to be an A I need to go maybe four or three steps up so I'm gonna do four steps and now I'm gonna go back to my spectrum view So yeah, it's kind of saying a G sharp around there. So I'm gonna go back over here and I'm just gonna bring it up one more step. Uh, one more step right here. And again, to get this view, you just double click on an audio file in Ableton and it'll just bring you to your sample editing view. And you can do a lot of cool stuff if, with clips and uh, more things I, oh, I haven't even thought about making a tutorial for something. Uh, I'll, I know what, if, uh, I'll explain this in another tutorial, but there's really cool stuff you can do with this section. Anyway, let's listen to this. So it's A. Uh, sounds a little bit funny, but uh, let me see. Uh, all right, well, that's A, so I'm going to stick with that. This is just my top layer anyway, so it's okay. Uh, I'm gonna bring in a, uh, I'm just gonna work in a random order. Uh, I was gonna throw in more kicks, but I'm just gonna find a hi-hat pattern. So I'm gonna go to uh, my Loop Masters uh, purchases folder. Um, again, I bought this Den Mouse one off of Loop Masters, but I like to have it right here because it's quicker for me to access than to click through all these little menus. Um, but that that's where I get a lot of samples. I like to buy samples there, especially right now because of like Cyber Monday and stuff. You guys should go check that out. They have cool stuff. So I'm just gonna look for uh, a crash. I like that. It's unique, also. So I'm going to just shorn it up to uh, quarter notes and just uh, copy it like that. So it's pretty much playing the same pattern as my kicks. And uh, it would be really great if it wasn't soloed. So why I like to uh, layer in something like that with the kick is because uh, what that's going to do for me is it's going. I'm just going to create an atmosphere, a space out of this. So this is going to get really interesting. So I like to do a few things. I like to throw in a utility, a uh, reverb, and uh, that should be good for now trying to think of what else I could do to this to give it that space I like mm, that's it so I'm gonna turn off the reverb I'm just gonna add some width to this and listen to that all right so they're both around the same volume I don't want it to be louder uh, than when the utility was off so off and then on it's around the same volume which is what I wanted except now it's just wider and it's further in the stereo field and now when I add on this reverb uh, I'm just gonna quickly tweak the settings to what I think I want so I want a big decay sort of around three milliseconds maybe less bring that down a bit now I'm gonna low cut it to around 300 Hertz Cut out the five, that's fine for me. Maybe too much. All right, so that's kind of what I want so far. Uh, let me think. What else could I do to this? Maybe erosion would be cool. A little bit of that.
Maybe another one. Alright, so I kind of have a little bit of an atmosphere, but I probably need to bring in more elements to complete that feel, so this... Oh, what the hell. This is cool. I'll you throw this in. I like having these kind of big uh, claps here. Uh, I should probably copy over this utility and start with that on this clap. So let me see. Uh, this needs a reverb too. These are the things I like to throw reverbs on just to create that atmosphere. I'm going to throw on a 26 second pre-delay around there. Uh, I'm, yeah, The reason why I like to do like a 26 uh, millisecond uh, pre-delay at this BPM is because I've already calculated a decay time uh, using a formula that you can calculate delays with and you can also apply that to reverb so I think the formula is actually the reverb the decay time formula is a uh, 60,000 divided by the BPM of the song will give you a quarter note uh, delay so and then you can divide that by two and you'd have eighth notes and then so on and so forth you keep dividing it by two and you get sixteenth notes and that helps me find out you know how to uh, kind of fit in delays and stuff and uh, I apply the same with reverb so I think it's around this uh, range right here for eighth note uh, delay I think it might be smaller or more or less I just I just memorize that number uh, I'd have to do the formula to uh, find out what it is Alright, so it's really far out on this on the sides, this uh, thing, so I kind of like how that sounds. Uh, maybe I'll find a nice loop, so I'm going to probably go back to my, uh, maybe I'll go Vengeance for this. So this is a Vengeance Dirty Electro, uh, let me see, fuck, uh, Dirty Electro Volume 2, so if you guys have this folder, actually I'm going to give you guys a session anyway. Um, but let me just throw a little disclaimer so that I don't get in trouble and you don't get in trouble. Uh, if you're going to use the samples, uh, I'm, throw I'm giving you guys the session for educational purposes. So if you do feel like making your own track and whatever, um, just make sure you own the sample first because uh, I've, I've had buddies, you know, like, you know, get their shit flagged and or, you know, one of those like phony lawsuits because of samples that they had in their songs that they didn't own. So just make sure that doesn't happen to you. Just always use what you have. Uh, it doesn't, you don't have to have fancy uh, sample packs to, you know, make good music. Um, not at all. And if not, there's tons of free stuff out there, like tons of free sample packs and stuff. You just Google that if you really feel like you need better samples. I, I, I get new samples all the time, free or I buy them or whatever. Just I like having a lot of samples, but you definitely don't need them. Ableton has a lot of great 
uh, default stuff too. If you ever go through this, uh, the drums or sounds, or actually I might just do that right now. So uh, let me go drums. Actually, I don't want to go to drums. I want to go to maybe, let me see. I haven't been in this folder for a while because I'm always use, uh, using my stuff. But uh, let me see drums, I guess. And um, let me see, let me type in loop. See what pops up there. Okay, uh, simple sun or hi hats. Hi hats. Okay, never mind. Fuck that. I'm just gonna look through and see what I can find. So, oh, samples. Duh, I'm an idiot. It's right here in front of me. So now I'm gonna type in hut loop. And let me see what I can find. And I'm gonna bring down this blue. Uh, Q volume sort of thing down because I don't want this to be too loud. I wonder if I type in 128 what it will find me. So 128. Wow, that's actually a really good sample there. <laughs> I'm going to listen to the other ones though. That's interesting. I'm gonna maybe do something with this, but uh, let me listen to this. So I did copy a utility onto it and I brought down the width a little bit. I'm going to maybe throw on a little bit of reverb. I'm going to have it really low though. So that's a nice appropriate reverb for that I think. Maybe that's a little better. It's all about tweaking and listening. So just give it a listen and then go back to tweaking. And, you know, once you're happy with it, just move on right away. Uh, if you're not happy with it later, you can always uh, still work on it. So I, I'm not going to take too much time working on this. I'm just going to kind of move on now. So uh, I think what's missing here are some claps. So now I'm going to go back to my, uh, actually, I'm just going to stick to Ableton. I'm just going to try to keep this very Ableton. So that way I'm not giving you guys too many samples that you might not have that I own. I think it's illegal to distribute uh, plugins that you buy. I don't know, some bullshit. Not that I care, but like, you know, since I'm broadcasting this, like, you know, I don't want my uh, live streams to get flagged and stuff. I mean, those there are companies that just have guys on the internet looking that shit up all day. Trust me, it's better safe than sorry. And so, anyway, uh, let me, I just typed in clap here, so let me see what the stock sample claps are in Ableton.
I'm actually quite pleased with the samples I hear from Ableton the, in the past and right now. They're really good samples uh, that are included with Ableton. So don't feel like you don't like you need to buy fancy packs because you don't. They're an investment. That's it. You know. Oh, this is interesting. I like this. It's different. So uh, what I'm going to do with this is pretty much the same thing I did with my uh, uh, crash and my kick. I'm just going to make a, f I'm just going to uh, make it play on every quarter note. So I'm going to bring this volume down now. All right, I'm going to keep it uh, pretty uh, much. I'm not going to throw on utility or reverbs on it yet. I'm just going to keep building. And since it, uh, if you listen to it, it has this like little thing that's kind of panning from uh, like left to right. So I'm not going to, you know, throw it further out into the stereo field and make it wider. I mean, it's already doing like some like panning effects, which makes it naturally sound more wide anyway. So uh, I'm just going to leave it alone. Let me see. What else do I want here? So I'm going to group these elements together because this, these are my intro percussion elements. So I'm going to group them all together. That way I can compress this part alone later on. And I uh, might throw on a filter just to see what I can, if there's anything cool I can do with a filter on this. So filter. Yeah, I'm not going to do any filter shit. Uh, never mind, but still going to have them all grouped together. And uh, now here's a sample that I was saving. So let me hear that again. Oh, that's perfect. So uh, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a simpler. There's a reason why I saved this kick, this sample for, for so long. And I'm gonna drag this into the simpler or any sampler really, but simpler is the one I have. So I'm gonna use it. Now I can get rid of this. And now uh, let me just create a little MIDI stuff. So I'm gonna press Command Shift M, I have some MIDI, and I'm gonna go to uh, C3. Uh, C3, where the hell are you? Let me just zoom in. Perfect. So uh, when you uh, let me just say right now, if you don't know this, uh, when you drag in a sample to the simpler here in Ableton. Uh, to hear the original untransposed version of that note, that's going to usually be on a, on C3, on this note. So that's your starting point. So if I start to drag it out, I start to hear more of the sample. So uh, I, I'll have to tune in a bit anyway, but uh, I kind of like what I'm playing right here. I'm going to press command three to give me triplet grids. So now I'm in one sixteenth time. Uh, when I press command three again, it takes me back to one sixteenth time. But now I'm in uh, that, that same timing, but triplets and, uh, oh shit. Let me go back to that. Yeah, there we go. Uh, let me snap it to a grid line. Actually, I'm just going to make a new one because this one's giving me some. I'm going to mute all this other shit. Let me see uh, if this is even playing to a scale. So this is one whole step. I can go half step above this. Wait, uh, whole step, half step. Okay. 
I'm just uh, working in a minor scale. No, that's not going to work. That's more interesting, but not sold on it yet. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. I usually like to do things minimalistically, so uh, the simpler the better for me. Okay, I'm just going to kind of copy this pattern. Uh, just to see, you know, just to kind of get a vibe of what I can do with this. Uh, fuck, come on. <laughs> there we go, I got it. So now I'm going to just listen to this first note. going to loop that. going to go back to my spectrum. So this is playing like an F. So I'm going to click it back over here, command A, select all of it. I'm going to go back to my spectrum. Uh, let's see. So it needs to go way higher up, so I'm going to press command A again. Uh, where the fuck? All right, so that's playing an A, so that's good. Let me hear how it sounds with everything else. All right, so that's okay. Uh, I'm going to just say this real quick, call it uh, series temp blah 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 blah. Alright, uh, so I'm just going to save that to my desktop and uh, blah, 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 blah. leave in place, sure. I'm just saving because uh, if you don't know this, Ableton's not a perfect uh, software just like any other software and you have to save your work like crazy so because I'm I'm kinda caught up in doing this video I didn't save my project right away which is what I suggest you do and uh, I also do this because I'm paranoid I always go collect all and save uh, leave in place it's just asking me about some samples and stuff and uh, now I'm ready to continue working so I'm not trying to I kind of get a vibe of what I could do with this, you know, uh, how I could filter in and make this an intro. Because uh, I'm going to write this in a linear way, but uh, for I think... Let me see, I'm going to try to take this out for this part. I should probably make my kick a little bit bigger. So I'm going to press Command-Shift-T. That's going to give me a MIDI track. I'm going to just swap this uh, default grand piano for... Bassism, so where the fuck are uh, is my bassism? So bassism is like my little secret weapon for kicks, uh, especially if I'm doing subs or big like hard style distorted kicks or whatever. So again, I'm gonna just select a range, C Command Shift M, create a little bit of a a MIDI thing, and now I'm just gonna go to where the hell a A1 maybe a A2 actually. I'm just going to press shift and left arrow to make this note longer and then command D and I'll just select these and uh, make a four to the floor pattern. So that's what uh, bassism sounds like by default. I need to lower it because it's way too loud. <laughs> so I'm going to make this a really low end patch.
probably put this around 60 dB quieter than uh, my top kick. Or not, maybe I'm just gonna put 2 dB quieter. And I'm gonna group my kicks together and I'm probably just gonna throw on some compression onto that later and uh, EQ it so these don't clash. I think a nice reverb would sound great on this, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna copy one of the reverbs I have from here. This last bottom one was pretty subtle. Actually, this one was. And I'm gonna just tweak it now from there. So, uh, let me... And also you can add some spread onto uh, with the simpler. Now I kind of want to tweak it. Uh, so let's go whole step. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure I like this thing. Uh, I gotta figure out a better pattern for that. I might just pick this up uh, tomorrow and uh, I'll just continue from here. Uh, tomorrow will kind of just be intro to bass sounds and finishing the drums. And then the day after that, we'll hopefully start getting into uh, some synths. Uh, intro, day four. Actually, uh, tomorrow's gonna be a live stream, so I might get a lot done. Again, I, I, f I forgot to not talk so much and to just work really fast because. Uh, I probably worked three times uh, faster than I was going at today because I was just talking. So if you're on the uh, the stream tomorrow, you feel free to ask me questions. But also, if you just want to see me get this track done quickly, just tell me to shut up and rush because uh, I will do that. And I won't take offense because I'll know that I told you guys to do that unless you're just some random jerk telling me to shut up for no reason. Then that would not be cool. Anyway, uh... Thanks for watching. Tune in tomorrow. Uh, follow me on Facebook so that you know, uh, so that uh, I you can stay up to date with me, and uh, I'll tell you guys what time I'm gonna go live tomorrow. So uh, thanks for watching.